$15 half packs, and then we're done for the year. So eat shit. <laughs> Belt! Play it, play it. What, what? Oh, you want me to play a play little it. bit? What? What? Oh! Duck Hump! Duck Hump! Yeah! What? What? Oh, yeah! <laughs> Woo! Duck Humper! showing up because I as in mute Shannon are here uh, they, they wandered in likely drunk um uh all right guys that's it we gotta wrap everything up disruptive that's it best episode ever thank you so much Patrick Rothfuss um whoa look at this look at this everybody had their money on Pat Patrick do you realize how seriously everyone takes the belt bets that uh, uh they, this is the belt bet uh website and you can see here, nothing, nothing. And then I assume this is when you dropped your first uh, curse bomb. And you jumped <laughs> up. All the action was on Patrick. 10,000 ducats on Patrick. And you slowly climbed the entire way as everyone became increasingly convinced. <laughs> until finally you had all of the votes. 32,000 votes. Oh, somebody got a massive payout at 150 right there. I almost feel like you threw that one, Brian. Like, like you knew that there was like some crazy action that you were you're getting a cut of. I actually didn't. I had no idea. Uh, as you know, I don't. I don't. He like said under oak. <laughs> <laughs> I had nothing. I swear. All right, what are we gonna call this episode? It's got to be either. Duck I mean, like I don't think we should give away a Broners in the Mist. No, or Duck the Humpers. Mist is oh. Crematorium. <laughs> The crematorium, Austin's crematorium, uh, duck. I like Austin's crematorium or crematorium. Yeah, the, I mean duck comp. Do you want to give away? Because duck no, comp no way, early. no way. <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> Brian Brian is a <laughs> <laughs> on golden duck. Uh, yes. Ducket is a strong. I like uh, duck it. I like duck it. All right, one fifty-seven. Here we go. This is NSFW episode 157, recorded on December 11th, 2012. Duck it. <laughs> I just saw something in the chat room that made me dissolve. What was it? A flea bag horse? It was horse? just the crematorium. <laughs> and then a tagline that just said, Oh my God. We'll jerk off in your coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Welcome right. to Austin's Crematorium, <laughs> where you can rely on locally grown beans and the kind of music that time has forgotten. Also, we'll jerk off in your coffee. Come on down to the crematorium. Okay. The freshest racism every Tuesday open mic. Oh, oh. <laughs> bad idea. You're tired of that old stale racism. <laughs> Eat you if you get my drift. Come on down, but we're spinning fresh racist sea chanties. Uh, hold on. I've got my new favorite uh, animated gif here loaded up, ready to rock. <laughs> God, there's some times where I look at the things that I've that people have captured of me doing on the internet, and I just like almost want to run for Congress. Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> I'll tell you, wait, I mean, just, everyone's like, like, oh, I can't do it. There's too much things I've made. No, now I want to, just because that would be an awesome race. You're like, uh, would be like, uh, discovered again today, another gif of candidate Young <laughs> doing something called the duck hump. <laughs> how do you explain? Now, uh, you and I have talked like early on about how uh, I used to call I'd say it. That was me doing power squats because I'm committed to fitness. <laughs> to fitness, physical fitness. Uh, okay, look, uh, why don't you sum things up, and uh, and we'll wrap this thing up. All right. Hi, people. It's me, <laughs> Justin. <Yeah. laughs> you're, like, you're, like, you're like an old man confused why we're in your living room. You're like, hi. Um, 
This just in. The ducks. <laughs> ducks. Do they need to be humped? I say yes. <laughs> in fact, here, let me let me enhance this video here. Let's just go. We'll just go ahead. And we'll just do it. Here we go. Yeah. Ooh, it lights up awesomely well. Yeah. Duck humping. What? Get it wet. What? Duck, duck, hump. Them ducks need to be humped. What? Duck, duck, goose. You know I am the goose. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> what did I miss? Uh, Chad, he said, duck, duck, goose. You know I am the boo. Uh, I know I am the goose. Getting in your caboose. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go for it. Uh, all right. <laughs> JD says, Justin claims the Pope wrote the Bible at one point. You want to tell him he's wrong? He's infallible. He can say whatever he wants. He's the Pope. Uh, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, in this episode of NSFW, we are joined by award-winning author and fantastic man beard grower, Patrick Rothfuss. We do a lot of things, including spin a yarn about a month. <laughs> 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 that, so that was so hard to keep in mind. That was so much win. That was so hard to keep in mind. <laughs> you gave me that setup. We were like, we do a lot of things. I'm like, oh, well, clearly he wants this. <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. You were saying. <laughs> well, Jerry, cough in your cough. Coming up next. All right, go, go. Do it again. Hi. On this episode of NSFW Show, we're joined by Patrick Rothfuss. You don't know who he is? Well, you're a goddamn idiot. He's a fantastic, <laughs> award winning author. And we're getting a couple of yarns about a handsome young gentlemen. Not gay enough for you? I do a dance called the Duck Hump. It's all coming up next on NSFW Show. Wink! <laughs> Nicely done, sir. Uh, do you have, do you have... All that means you're going with your coffee. Come on up next. <laughs> ah, Cook of the Race Badger Fridays. Hey, hey man. <laughs> <buddy>. oh, Jesus. <laughs> like, That's uh, I'm ready for a Christmas surprise. How about you, Cook? <laughs> All right, go, you want to, you, go for it. Wait, what? Oh, God damn it. The ad reads. Yeah, you got to do ad reads. Uh, by the way, Patrick, if we're keeping you up past your bedtime, you, uh, we don't feel like you need to stay, uh, but we love having you here. And in fact, the, the longer you want to stay. I have to say that that summary you just did was like a superpower. You know, that is, uh, you know, that Hollywood is screaming your name right now. If you can sum up this show on the spur of the moment in like less than 50 words like that, then then you you have missed your true calling, my friend. Oh, my God. Uh, uh, yeah, yes. Look, let, uh, let, no, let, sir, me, let me say, no, as, as, as we are wont to do on, on, look, on NSFW, we get ourselves into a lot of shenanigans and trouble, and the only way to make things right, the only way to get more of this idiocy is if you guys give so much goddamn money to world builders, <laughs> you could, that's the only way to, to encourage this kind of thing. No, that that's pretty much it. Although I'll tell you, there is one more thing I do want uh, to help a, a chat realm friend, uh, right re real quick before I start doing this. Uh, and hopefully we can see some, some results as they come in uh, on iTunes right now, your friends and mine at uh, joke and Biagio uh, have their documentary dying to do Letterman. Patrick, yeah. what happened is, uh, they uh, did a fantastic documentary, an award-winning documentary about a comedian who uh, found was diagnosed out with he cancer, got cancer, uh, and wrote, uh, you know, had like a, an online campaign to get on the David Letterman show. And the David Letterman show is like, no, we don't just put people on who have cancer because that wouldn't be. Cancer's you know, gross. Next up is people with crudies. And then finally, well, that's not what finally, they said. They the blacks very, it was very, is what and, they and said. The, the, the documentary goes into it. It's a very touching thing. But he decides he's going to spend whatever time he has left on Earth becoming a good enough comedian that he could go on Letterman on merit. And it's a fantastic documentary. So go ahead. on, And it's on iTunes right now. Just got released on iTunes last week. Just go ahead over there. Let's compliment bomb this thing. Let's throw uh, a bunch of just uh, awesome things in there. Uh, I've seen it. Brian's seen it. it. It's fantastic. We give it our full, uh, you know, full salute. The old double, 
the butthole uh, salute. We give it we give it the binary salute, which is where you have a one and a zero, and you say this is how good that one is. Let's give it yeah. the, the the one gun salute. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's I swear this never happens. That's what salute we're giving it. Um All right. Dying or do letterman is what it is online. Go ahead and throw really nice comments into it because they are awesome people. And also like they're like Joe and Biagio are the people that like made somebody whose job it was to like stay and wait at their offices so they could let me in so I could do the show. From L.A. the yeah. night that I did the also, show. Also, they let LA. us make Zombie President. So that alone. Yeah. If you enjoyed Zombie, zombie President, President, you get you owe Absolutely. them for dying to do Letterman. Go ahead, Justin. Here we go. Cool. All right. Quick. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace, the fast and easy way to create a high-quality website, blog, or online portfolio. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase on new accounts, go to squarespace.com and use offer code NSFW12. And recently, they've launched a developer platform for complete code control. And I need to pull up the next one. Can I do the end? Here we go. Can I can I do the end? You want to do the end? Can I do the end? Throw a little stink on the end. Stink. Do the end. All right. <clears throat> By the way, although it comes at a price. What? At the fact that. You despise the end. Yeah. You hated the end. Well, you had a solid year criticizing me, criticizing me for doing the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. now you have to admit that you love it and you want to marry it and have its babies. No, that's why I want to do it so I don't have to hear it again. <laughs> that's, that's so real. Then you are rejected from being able to do the end, and I will do. You the do end. the end, fine. And pond five. The world's stock media marketplace. If you're a media maker looking for video, photos, illustrations, music and sound effects, after effects, or 3D models, check out Pond5. And for an exclusive 50 free stock media files, go to pond5.com slash NSFW. <laughs> Take it from me, butt wind. But it was wind. But it was wind. <laughs> but it was wind. But it was wind. Pond 5. All right. Uh, okay, look, we're going to wrap things up. Uh, Patrick, we may do a bit of an after show while I encode this episode, but uh, I cannot thank you enough for joining us. Um, it's it's so hard to take somebody whose work you love so much and subject him to the horse crap you do. <laughs> 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 but but you rolled with the punches, man, and you are a chat roll favorite. What, what is your twi tw Twitter handle? Can be, where can people follow you? Do, do you want to know like the most shameful thing in the world? I am the last person... On Earth, who's not on Twitter yet? You want to do it right now? Yeah. How about you get on Twitter right Dude, now? Let's see what we can make happen. Why don't you jump? No, on? no, actually, actually, what what we've got going on? If you go looking for me, you will find six identical Twitter profiles, all with my name. Yep. We've got something planned for uh, January. We're gonna, we're I'm gonna launch onto Twitter with a little bit of old fashioned Ballyhoo. Huh. There huh. we go. All That's, right. We're unfamiliar well, with Ballyhoo. So, so if, if they followed all the Patrick Rothfusses. <laughs> That would be that good. Would be That'd be good. That'd be perfect. Okay, so those are at least run by you. Those aren't cyber squatters or nothing. Nope. They're not. Nope, they're, they're not duck mean. humping out there. They're not duck humping <laughs> on your props. <laughs> no, this was this was a ton of fun. I can't thank you guys enough. And uh, because one of the, you know, I've gotten really good at like sweet talking uh, publishers and authors into donating the stuff for the fundraiser, but uh, my my primary like news avenue has been bloggers and other authors and facebook and this year as you probably know like they neutered all the facebook accounts so yeah, i what, can't what what exactly happened with that because i i only heard about it uh, from um uh, uh captain sulu why do i not know his real name <laughs> to George, to Kai, yeah him too uh <laughs> his grandfather takai um but but they uh uh like he was saying that like you got all these subscribers and they're like oh you want your stuff to go to these subscribers munzies is what that's what about doing. it they you know it used to be like even f i think like four months ago i've got i've only got like sixty five thousand people on facebook so i'm i'm like no felicia day but uh but you know it used to be i i launched something and most of those people would see it. And if they shared it, then their friends would see it. But now if I post something like maybe 10, 15,000 people see it yeah, because they've been slowly turning down the volume on everyone's post, right. hoping that people will pay 
that's their new business model. Now, now you know, you know what the trick around that is, is if you design something from the beginning to go viral on its own, like you could start with just five people and the whole world will see about it. For example, uh, this cover for Broners in the Mist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, just throwing it out there. If you want to promote your third book, that's a, it's a really way, good Not way. audible, but right next to me <laughs> is Shannon Morse, who just saw that cover and just went, oh my God. <laughs> Uh, well, there we go. So Broner's in the mix. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna have to write that. Okay. Book now. <laughs> no. Okay. Here's what's great is I want like five years from now you to be at some panel like you're you're at Comic Con as it's now been turned into the you know the the latest you know Showtime is now the number one network because they nabbed the rights to the King Killer Chronicles early. You're up there. There's two thousand people there. I want some guy to go to the mic and be like. Would you care to comment on uh, the fact that you never released your best work, Broners in the Mist? <laughs> Broners in the Mist. Uh, actually, Patrick, can I ask you a question? Like, have you gotten uh, 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 some some sniff around attention on on King Killer Chronicles for for adaptation? Yeah, folks have been sniffing around actually since before the book was even published. Um, I, I was really lucky. Uh, I ended up with a, a good film agent. Uh, actually, I didn't. I have nothing to do with that. My my agent called me before the book came out, and he goes, "Can you talk to Jerry?" And I'm like, "Sure." Who's Jerry? He goes, "Oh, Jerry's your film agent." I'm like, "Okay, I guess I have a film right. agent now." <laughs> and uh, since then, there's been a few fairly similar, uh, fairly serious approaches. But like right now, we're in the middle of kind of like the biggest, most serious one, um, which I probably can't officially comment on. But uh, it's TV really flattering, feature, and it's except really cool. to confirm that the title. <laughs> is the best. I'm just saying, just uh, throwing that out there. Just well, I mean, are are you? Do you think that your that King Killer is better as as a movie or or, or a television show? I think it's almost got to be a TV show, um, just because there's there's there has not been a fantasy movie like a big budget fantasy movie. Uh, that's been a success that hasn't been an action movie. And gotcha. my, my book isn't an action movie. If they try to make it an action movie, it's going to, it's going to suck. Well, and, and, and there's action in it, but the, the favorite, if you talk to the fans, their favorite scenes are, are very rarely the action scenes. Like, I don't know why, but to me, the scene of the way you described, uh, um, and I forgive me, I'm going to horribly mangle it because you're the one who wrote it. And I'm the one who's half remembering because I read it once, but the idea like, uh, with, with sympathy between two coins and the idea of one coin, like a pulley needing to go twice as high up to draw the other one up there. Like I, I, I understood the magic as you understood it as a physic as a physical system. And that was like an aha moment that I so rarely get from certainly from fantasy books. Yeah. It's and and there's really there's no there's no sword in the whole first book, there's no sword fight, there's no car chase, there's you know, there I mean the one explosion, I suppose. Uh but like, uh literal no. under five duck humps. <laughs> yes. <laughs> The wind, uh, there is a breeze at one point, though. It's a very exciting breeze. <laughs> the, uh, and so, yeah, and that's what we're actually talking about right now is some of these, these TV rights. And like I said, it's flattering, and it's a, it's a pretty good deal. But part of me really wishes that this hadn't happened for a couple years because, like, Martin... You know, when when the deal finally got made, he was huge. He was George Martin, so he could get more. It was clout. it was all those pub crawls and the pizza and the NFL. <laughs> oh, that's not and, what you meant. You know, I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. It's the same thing with with Gaiman. You know, he turned down offers on American Gods for ten years, and now he's got some TV writing credit under his belt and and all that. So, you know, they'll listen to him when it comes to working on his show, because he sold the rights to American Gods to HBO. But, and but, I'm nobody. So, you know, well, but, not you, you want to know what is, and like, like the New York Times wrote about this and, and it's, it's very, very interesting that now the model of television, not only on HBO, which has always been about making a big noise where people, you can have a big vocal minority, love a show, read wire comma the, and it makes money for HBO because all they need to do is have critics write about it and have it win awards for other people to say, oh, that's interesting. I want to try that out by buying HBO. But also now on cable, like networks have understood, don't worry about advertising. 
advertising may or may, may or may not come and the audience may or may not come. However, if it's a good enough quality that a vocal enough audience will scream and yell at their cable carrier, if they don't carry it, then they can raise their cable subscription rates and they can make money on the series. So it just needs to be quality. It needs to be good enough that people are obsessed about it. And I think that, that's, that's perfect for a situation like you. It's probably the best adaptation market you could possibly think of for your work where you want to do something more long form and engrossing and not just like a wham bam like and then a sword comes out and stabs him like <laughs> right well but and and on the flip side i was thinking like what a great position that you're in in that you have the benefit of there being incredible hype and buzz around uh, george r r martin's work uh and then and you certainly get a halo effect from that where where now people who otherwise would never have seen the potential of what something like the king killer chronicles could do all of a sudden are looking at it saying oh, i want a be bearded fantasy author in my office by noon <laughs> 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 and you know it is true because and actually there's been a, a, a couple folks or a couple shows that have really proven that like a good character centered story will work you know like Joss Whedon did it you know it's like yeah. Buffy really wasn't an action show it had sure. action but what made people love it was the characters um, same's true with people, people loved Galactica. it in spite of the action in the first season because oh the action God, in the first yeah. season was terrible yeah absolutely Absolutely. Battlestar Galactica did it. And even like really, although there is action in Martin stuff, you, you people stay tuned in because they're really interested food. in the story. It's mainly food and descriptions of singing, if I remember my Martin <laughs> correctly. <laughs> Chocolate poured over thunder was his voice. <laughs> Let's sing. Let's sing again. The bear and the maiden fair for the 50th time this point. Yeah. <laughs> Not that Justin and I call each other after we finish each book and gripe as we walk around. The in bear, circles. the bear, and the maiden fair. I seriously. Oh, I, it, it, the bear was an Irishman. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> and, and, and because we all know them, and Patrick, you were just on Sword and Laser. Uh, I when they were talking about like, oh, like we got George R. R. Martin. I'm like, literally, the only thing I want you to ask him is how big of a hit the bear and the maiden fair is. <laughs> In in like in the world of Westeros, it's, it's like hey just give Jude. me an allegory to today's time of the bear and the maiden fair. Like, is it like a temptation song where it's just been around <laughs> forever and everybody knows it? Is it a children's song? I'm literally like, you can't have had every character sing it without thinking about this, and that's all I want to know. But but King did the same thing in the Dark Tower series with uh, with uh, Hey Jude because that was one of the things that sort of was like a, like a question mark in that world was you have this bizarre world that's clearly not Earth clearly has nothing to do with Earth Earth but you find people in a sleepy saloon in the middle of the desert singing Hey Jude which is awesome and bizarre the first time you hear it. And then yeah. a little familiar the second time he comments it. And then finally, like by the fourth book, you're like, yeah, yeah, I know. There's there's Hey Jude. What other Beatles hits do they have? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, you know, if you can, it, it is a, a weird thing because well, some people never even think of something like that in like a society that doesn't have radio. Well, how, how does everybody get this this earworm? Um, and, uh, you know, most most readers won't even that won't ever even come into their heads. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the sort of thing that I think about all the time, too. So, uh, man, it's like now I want to go back and see if you've snuck a bear in the Maiden Fair on your – wait, well, hold on. Sorry. <laughs> I mean – but uh, Right. We'll just – sorry. <laughs> that was not what I was – I spoke the words. They were coming out of my mouth. And I was like – You spoke sounds... the words, John. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what, man. That is uh, – it, it, it's super exciting to see, uh, you know, you get – Hopefully you get you get the right attention. And I think that like right now, especially television, is such an interesting place uh, for those kind of stories to be told. There's actually there's a book I want everybody to read by uh, Alan Seppenwall, uh, who's a television critic for Hit Fix. He used to be at the Newark Star Ledger. He self published a book called The Revolution uh, Was Televised, and it's all about like I think it's like the twelve shows on television that kind of changed television forever, starting with I guess. Chronologically, Buffy was the first, but like Oz, he says, is kind of like uh, the one that probably resonated the most around uh, Hollywood. But it's great. It, it, it has chapters on Oz, Breaking Bad, The Sopranos, Mad Men, uh, Friday Night Lights. Uh, and, and they talk to all the creators and the people behind them. 
uh, all the people that made it happen. It's great stuff, but it tells you, know, it just, it shows you how we've gotten to this point where now television's like not a little bit better than it ever has been. It's like the best thing ever that it ever, ever, ever has been. And there's a reason for it. And it's because these shows and it, it's an awesome book. That's a, that's, that's a cool. Good, yeah. No, I mean, never, never before now was there a time where it's like uh, television would be the medium of choice that people would jump to first for, for a lot of this stuff. Uh, Patrick, I, if you got to run now, now's a great time. Cause I got to encode this episode. Um, that's cool. But dude, freaking amazing. You were great. It was a really, really good time. Thank you so much for joining us, man. And again, I can't, I can't thank you enough. If you ever need somebody to pinch hit, um, like if you have a guest drop out or something, uh, this is a ton of fun. So don't be bashful and drop me an email. I'd love to come back. I will not lie, uh, Patrick. We have had people that we invited into our bazaar of uh, goulash and, uh, they, they were uncomfortable with the, the slushy <laughs> nature of everything, but you, my friend rolled with it. It was amazing. <laughs> and also serious. If, if. Some bastard down in New Zealand could get a set of pipes. I want a set of pipes. I want to. I want to give give them all around. Be I want to be pan piping all over America for the USA. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Uh, Patrick, awesome. You're gonna be back on. Thank you very very much for coming on, man. Absolutely, cool. man. See you all later. right, take care, buddy. Holy cow, man. Uh, do you want to do any after show, Justin? You got anything left in you? I got to encode this thing. Jammer B, you cool hanging out? Can I say something, Justin? Really? Yeah. No, you can't. Okay. Stop talking. That's I did. Did I? Did I say you could talk? No. Yeah. No. We got. We have. Dude. We got multiple Alexes here. It's crazy. We're doing. We're. We're going full double Alex. Double complete Alex. Uh. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh. Go for it, Vincent. I, I was gonna say, Justin, since now that now that uh, the our guest is off, the minute he said Neil Gaiman the first time, we all were were pretty much watching. <sighs> I was like watching your expression, just to sort of like. Like, like that we're all kind of almost at, at, and they at, wouldn't stop man it like, was driving me nuts it was uh, no oh, oh yeah sure it was driving you nuts you were, what no be well, because i'm trying like i would cut over to me and you guys would start giggling we, we and then justin would be smirking <laughs> and she, i'd be like i was like there's no way that th you cannot thread this stone no, needle no, yeah I, I, that's why i was like trying and to not have us look like but assholes the thing is i was looking at justin and justin's like the first thing he goes he, he was like i should say it but if i say it i'm gonna look like a total asshole in this you know why page. because he would be being a total asshole <laughs> he would be in the middle of this I, heartfelt I did, I did, story like he, he was, was so cool yes, and, yeah. and maybe the next time i, I do as somebody who <laughs> knows and has met neil gaiman I think it would be it would be interesting to ask him that what is admittedly like the the impression is funny because it's retarded, right? Yes. Like well, and it's, plus also it's, it's it's the dumbest easiest pun, and the character in a meta way makes the dumbest easiest jokes ever. Like and and, and it like just hits the easiest crassest note. That that's why it's funny. Well, so and think, plus also it's it's all predicated on the idea that that the author. Uh, Neil Gaiman is not a real person, but instead a famous celebrity that none of us can conceive of being a real person. He's so far of light years ahead of us yeah. that we have to make the one joke that the, the poor guy's dealt with his whole goddamn life growing up, right? Well, yeah, I mean, I, and that's it, it's it's partly that that joke from that like very sophomoric right initial idea that you get as a fan to somebody who is obviously a god. You know, has literally descended from the heavens and has given us his work. And and you know, Sandman to me, like completely changed my outlook on comics. sleeping. Like you know, he's he's a brilliant author. Uh, okay, so Alex is telling me down there that every time that he mentioned uh, Neil Gaiman, all he heard was was Neil Gaiman. And like, listen, <laughs> that's why the joke is there. The joke is there because it's an easy joke. And and because that's you know that's what we were going for. No, I totally uh, understand. It's, it's just with the fact that we kept seeing your face, and, and I I was like, I, but then you guys would snigger well, and because I, I saw Justin oh, snigger. I, I literally was like trying best to keep it all all in. I was like, you know, put my face. I had I had to be the ass. I was just like I was like I was like all y'all. Well, because you were you were like getting close pretty much because you were seeing Justin's face and you were you were putting everything together and and by the way, uh, for the record, for anyone who's accusing me of intentionally affecting the belt bet or whatever, uh, Justin, I think will back me up on this when we are in the show we are there are 
we are not we I have no idea who's in the lead with the belt bet. I don't look at the belt bet. I, I think it's great that the belt bet exists. The only time I ever see the belt bet is when you show it. Yes, exactly. Right. So it's like when we are in the show, our concerns are we know we shouldn't curse, but there's occasional moments when we get so caught up in a bit or an idea and something just seems like the right thing to say, or we forget that we're live on Twitch, and then that's when it happens, and that's what happened on this. And I this was not this was not some kind of uh, fourth quarter, you know, taking a dive thing. You know, this was me. Uh, you, 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 you didn't pull a, a Merritt or a Belmont? For no, this, like, no. Like, try to outcurse each other in the final seconds? No, if anything, if anything, because remember, I think, I think it was right when I was making my plug, right? Uh, yeah. So it's like, uh, I feel very guilty at those moments, like I'm trying to harvest chat realm like a crop, which I, I'm not comfortable with. And sometimes... In those moments where, but on the flip side, there are people who'd be like, well, if there was a sale, I wish you had told me, Brian. So it's like, I, I want to give this commercial message out, but then, uh, but then I immediately feel guilty. So I say something stupid and occasionally it's something like, you know, throwing a curse word out there. Uh, <clears throat> speaking of harvesting, chat around like a crop. Yeah. Uh, I don't know whether this will ever go anywhere, but I'm just going to say progress on Project a bottle it. Wait, which is the project? Oh, you're talking about. Oh shit! Oh, I mean. Oh! <laughs> oh! Um, it took me a second to figure out what you were talking about, but then, but then, uh, but then I understood, and I think it's a great name for the project. A bottle a, a, it, a bottle it. Do, 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 do. Uh, yeah, man. Um. Also, oh, all right. So wait, we'll, we'll get off that topic. Yes. But I have some ideas. Okay, I was media. about to say it's too it's too soon for us to really. Oh God, no, 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 no. Yeah. We can't say anything right now. Uh, but it could be very cool. I think it would be very fun. Um, oh, by the way, I got a new poster. Did you see the latest poster from MDTA UK? Not that one. <laughs> not not that nice one. one. <laughs> not that one. It's around here. There we go. Have you seen Who this? Who is that? That's gumshoe. That's follow the clues. Gumshoes. I look like a like a what's it called like a uh, I don't know like a Quaker. <laughs> That's Quaker. Great, though. I love That's that Quaker. And there was like? a Fat Rick one that came out today too. <laughs> Here's the Fat. <laughs> <laughs> These are amazing. I think it's maybe my favorite thing that's happening right now. I don't year. know why Obama doesn't appoint me Secretary of French Fries. <laughs> All right, do we have a video we want to bring? Oh, there, there was a. Uh, oh, dude, I'm so glad that you called out the. Um, uh, going back to that video, and and uh, I can't believe also that we forgot briefly the moment that we had Patrick on the show because Patrick Patrick takes over like, hey man, we're gonna talk about world builders, right? And I was just like, of course we are. I totally did not get caught up in our horse crap. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like when that comes at the end of the show, it's better though. Yes. Well, like, it's a, a, and and also it's like people who listen. It's like they want they want the silly and they want it pretty quick if they can get it. You know. Well, we want to give them the the silly. Yes. You know exactly. And when somebody's willing to get silly, take off all their clothes and 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 show us their broners in the mist, then we want them to sell. All right, a lot here, of books. listen. Bob McBob wants us to show the 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 the, the Jan Frisch video. There ain't nothing to joke about with the Jan Frisch video, man. Yon Frisch, have you seen the Yon Frisch routine? Nope, don't care because I'm busy watching this awesome sauce with Olivia Newton John and, and uh, what's his name? John Travolta. It's just like new? Yeah, this came out like this week. What? I'm coming home tonight. Tonight. He's got eight what syllables. The? How wait? How have I not known that this is a thing, dude? This is huge. This thing, six million views. Everyone hates it. It's a gray lightsaber because they got rid of red because red was embarrassing for videos like this one. Eleven thousand people hate this video. 
I'm getting blown in my plane by a man. <laughs> Now, who's driving the goddamn car? It's like he's in a plane, he's in a car, then she's in the same No, maybe car. he's in England. Maybe. Oh, my goodness. Um, That's Olivia Newton-John. How old is she now? I don't know, but it looks like time has gotten physical with her face. <laughs> like, I mean, she actually looks pretty good. It's how she moves. She moves like a grandma. Look, watch, her, watch her movements. Like you can't you can't help age sagging your face and whatnot, but it's like uh, I don't know. Her attitude is just like wind is wheel of fortune. Come on. I'm singing to myself, I'm all my what did I just see? I'm I got a for I'll tell you what. I think you got the first part of the H O. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it looks like all right here. He's he's coming home. But replace that E with an O, and I think he's got uh, a direct hit. Yes. Stay hugged. Now, here's the thing, right? These guys are doing this because they did Grease, which was an international mega hit that exploded everyone's brains with awesome. I mean, goddamn, how long ago, though? Jesus. Yeah, fart. but, okay, long enough that this was probably made by a student uh, in a university who had their phone numbers and said, we can make a no, video with both No, no, this has got to be, this has charity written all over it, right? This thing, this thing like, is, the, like the charity doesn't want to spend any money on anything? This thing is too bad, man. Keep watching. It gets worse. It gets so much worse. Number one, charities do some terrible things, for the record. <laughs> <laughs> Except for world builders, which is awesome. And no, 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 no. Like, they're great at doing the things that they want to do, but when it's like, hey, let's get attention for things, like, sure. they're bad. Because they don't want to pay anybody. Because they're like, they don't want to be like, yeah, we spent a million dollars on a good director. Yeah, And sure. we got a great commercial. Because, hey, you want to know what people who spend a lot of money on commercials and, and stuff like that? Yes. It's called Coney 2012. This and guy right here. Actually, uh, this is who paid for this video. Here we go. Title of this is Duck Humper Begins. <laughs> Come on, tell me that's not great. <laughs> that's amazing. So wait, hold on. Like they, they, I thought they were free. They, they, they still have the Pon Five. No, logo he, on them? he didn't use. Okay, here's the thing. Go ahead and use the ones that have the Pon Five watermark on it, because and just, just, just show what you can do with this crap. Sure. Yeah. Oh my God, uh, dude. Okay, so we're on the same page here that Pat Rothfuss is pretty rad, right? Dude, Patrick rolled and rocked and was awesome, and he was hilarious when I met him at the Sword and Laser thing. He was even better tonight. Uh, I was very excited that he liked uh, the show, man. That is awesome. Yeah, me too. Uh, all right, man. And I, I got pumped because uh, so his books are on audiobook, right? Like I can oh like God. get like and the King Killer Chronicle. Good. They're way, way good. They, they, it may be one of my favorite audiobook readers. Who, who, uh, who reads them? Uh, let, here, let me let me throw a little sample in your face and then hope it's acid. And then so I'm doing I'm doing a Hobe, the Hobe right now. What uh, the the ho, ho, Hobe the Hobe? Oh, the, are yeah. you doing the, the French? Yeah. Name of the wind. Man, how long until targeted ads get to a point where Audible.com just knows that we we had Patrick on the show? And the moment I go there, it's like, hey, man, have you read Name of the Wind? All right, here we go. Uh, I thought the Name of the Wind was uh, Buttermiss's uh, <laughs> Autobiography. It's, it's, it's the name of my daughter. The Name of the Wind. Her name is Vaginimus. <laughs> why uh, Why are you uh, on here, But I thought you didn't have time to be on the show. I it don't. Was... I, I don't, which is why I've formulated a virtual simulacrum of me, Buttermus Wind. So I said it's... No, it's you. It's no. you. <clears throat> it's an interactive 
Virtual simulacrum. It's not because it would stop. It, it wouldn't stop uh, talking when uh, I started talking. It, like uh, uh, unless I had pre-programmed with your responses. Where are you right now, then? Uh, I am. Uh, I am uh, giving a blowjob to <laughs> to R.L. Stein. Oh Jesus, that's weird. But Buttermus Wind. I'm getting blown by Buttermus Wind. I Hold on, uh, and uh, I'm getting my is, balls is, is, drenched is, by Buttermus Wind. Is, We're is, sharing is, a glass of port. Are you ready for and the? I'm smoking a poorly rolled um, blunt um, by um, myself. Um, are you ready for the for the cold wind blows? Uh, <laughs> it's me, Buttermus Wind. No, in fact, I'm uncomfortable with your presence. I live alone. <laughs> but not tonight. No, <laughs> even tonight. In fact, it will inform my new goosebumps the tone. The, the man blue. who was at half mast and Graham, kicked out Jake and the blow jabbery from his hot tub. The three I'm friends had grown up together, listening to Cobb's stories and ignoring his advice. <laughs> Cobb peered closely at the newer, more attentive member of his small audience, the Smith's apprentice. Oh my God, this is a four minute long sample. That ain't gonna happen. No, I, I'm I'm down. I wanna I wanna listen to it and and I wanna I wanna uh, experience what uh, you wait, raved about because well, I, I know you were like the, the, uh, yeah you had, it, you had a big juicy boner about oh it. Oh my god, no! I see it like like a friend of mine said he was reading it and I got so excited I went back and I read uh, the Wikipedia summaries of both books just because I wanted to remember what I loved about about those books. People are begging What's us. C E F U uh, Twit Edit Facility Update. People are asking us to, to take a look. Here, let's take a look. NFC is a new technology that allows smartphones to transfer data between each other simply by tapping the phones together. Of course, there is the standard method of transferring data. Hey, Brian. Hey, Jeff. I have a photo I'd like to share with you. Oh, yeah? Here you go. But say, let's have some fun with it. Why not try the high five, the low five, behind the back? between the legs. Now let's say you want to secretly share a photo with a friend and not let your friends or colleagues see the transfer. <laughs> Simply slide your phone into your pocket, have your friend do the same, then gently tap below the waist. For even more covertness, have your friend facing away from you so that it is not <laughs> obvious you are in contact with each other. For a super covert three-way transfer, why not try the centipede? As you can see here, Brian will be receiving photos from two different friends. What do you think, Brian? Aren't those great photos? Hey, Brian, I've got a cool photo I want to share with you. My phone's not in my pocket. Neither is mine. <laughs> this has been another technology tip from Tefu and Inside Twit. Wow, that may be one of the best ones they've done. That's great. Alex? Well awesome. done, sir. Thumbs up. Uh, okay, look, we got to wrap things up. Uh, I got to uh, I got to book a Nice. Book. Alex is claiming the last joke was his, and I, I give him full credit for that. That's yeah. hilarious. Enjoy, sir. Uh, all right, look, I love all of you guys. This is awesome. I'm so glad that locally everything recorded in spite of... Uh, in fact, uh, this will be a weird one where despite the outages... I just tossed to Vincent 404 and Roberto covered for me, which I thank him for that. Not a problem. It was amazing, man. It was a really, really good uh, time. All right. Programming note. Let me give a programming note because we have just settled on this. Uh, next week, Christmas episode, uh, Friday. I don't know the time yet. But Wait, Friday? Friday night. Oh, let's rock it on Friday. You know what? I just thought of a special guest that might be able to show up on Friday. Good. Uh, I do know that there will be live in the studio. Andrew Bancroft has an original holiday song. He's going to sing for us. Uh, there might be some more people uh, with Brian. Might be some more people here in the studio. We're going to figure it out. It's going to be a hilarious time. Uh, but next Friday will be our Christmas episode. The end to our holiday trilogy. Because we had a, a Halloween episode, Thanksgiving episode, and a now Christmas uh, so there we go. You'll be able to figure it out, and it'll be a, a real funny time. Yes, and don't forget that uh, that uh, forty eight hours, and then we're done for the year on on this thing, on the scam stuff. Just FYI. Uh, all right, Justin, you were funny and amazing, and this was a really great episode, man. Uh, Brian, you are funny and amazing, 
and I'd like to duck hump you. Well, you're like funny looking, and also you smell funny. Well, I'd like to lick your face, and I find you cute. Well, last time you were here, I may have roofied you and had sex with your armpit. Well, I'm very excited, and I'm never washing this armpit again. Uh, it was clear you hadn't washed it before. <laughs> well, I also coated it with bacon grease and KY gel. <clears throat> or as I like to call it, breakfast. <laughs> Ring ding diddle ding dong do. It's the creepy danceroo. Woo! <laughs> So long, beautiful people. Love you. <laughs> Bye. Die to fire. Jolly Roger. Permission to board. Oh, See you next Tuesday. Bye. Bye.